Hi, this is Guthrie Govan here. Uh, today we're going to be lo learning another lovely Steve Vai track. This one's called Tender Surrender. And for convenience, I've decided to chop it up into four distinct sections. A uh, clean melody section, clean solo, dirty solo, and finally another clean melody section at the end. I've decided to demonstrate all of this without the use of a wah-wah pedal and without the bizarre cross-fading between the two amp sounds, which you hear on the original. This way, hopefully, the rendition's a little more usable to everyone at home. Um, all right, without further ado, let's get started. Um, most of the melody for this track is played in octaves, uh, which is perhaps a tip of the hat to Jimi Hendrix or Wes Montgomery. And the, sh the basic shapes you need are this one, which is an index finger, the A string, 7th fret, and your middle finger two frets higher on the G string. It's worth spending a little bit of time getting your hand position right so that when you hit all six strings you only hear those two. So the underside of this index finger can be muting the D string and also the two skinny strings. The top of your index finger can mute the low E. So as you can see you can be reckless with this hand and only hear those two notes. Okay. Um, now there's a companion octave shape on the D and B strings, which is uh, one fret wider. So for this shape, you'd probably use your little finger rather than your middle finger. Uh, so that's seventh fret on the D, tenth fret on the B string. And when you're playing melodies with these octave shapes, it's normally helpful just to concentrate on one string or the other. Um, so in this case, I'm going to focus on the lower string. Uh, so long as you lock your hand in the octave shape, you should be fine. Both the notes should come out. OK, so the first couple of bars sound something like this. OK, so if we slow that down, um, we start off with a little stab on a, an E minor 7 chord here. So you bar your index finger over the 7th fret every string except the low E. And middle finger at 8th fret on the B string and ring finger 9th fret on the D string. Then the octaves kick in. So now we have one of the 7th fret on the A string, then up 3 frets. Now onto the D and B string. So first finger now at the 7th fret. Up 2 frets. And now there's one on the G and E string, same shape as before and you're sliding into this position with your index finger at the 7th fret. And then to round it off, there's a little sliding motion where your index finger is going 7th, up to 9th, down to 7th, and then down again to the 5th. OK, so that bar again. Next bar starts with that shape again, sliding up two frets. And now there's a little chordal fill, uh, based, I, guess, I suppose, around uh, an E minor shape chord there. Very Hendrix. Uh, so what you do here is you pick the E string, the fifth fret, quickly hammer on at the seventh, pull off again. Now pick the B string and the D string. And now a quick hammer and pull off, five, seven, five on the G string. And finally, a five hammering onto the seven on the D string. Landing on this note, the D, fifth fret on the A string. OK, uh, next couple of bars. So what, we've, what we're doing there, kind of breaking the octave shape up, so you play the lower note first and then the higher one. You might find it helpful to use your uh, swearing finger. So that's seventh fret, pick just the B string, slide up, and now pluck the B string, slide the whole thing down two frets, and another two frets. And now the same idea of splitting the octave up, starting with fifth fret on the D, now pluck the B string, slide up to there. So that whole bar again. and rounding it off with 5th fret on the A string and again a broken octave shape, so it's the A string, then the G string. Slide all the way up to there, 10th and 12th frets. 
and greet the new bar with this octave shape here back at the 7th fret A string. Alright, and another Hendrixian chord fill here. Um, so we're basically fretting that shape and at some point in the future we'll be turning it into the Doobie Brothers minor seventh chord shape. So what we're doing here is pick the B string at the eighth fret and now the E string, let the bar do all the work. Now the G string and the D string, so B, E, G, D. And now pluck all three of those strings together, the D, G and B strings. Hammer on that chord shape there, as discussed earlier. And finally, seventh on the D, tenth on the A, seventh on the D again. So that whole fill. And land on a stab on this chord, which is kind of a minor 11th shape. Uh, you're just barring here on the middle four strings and adding your middle finger on the B string at the eighth fret. Okay, moving on from there, we have a variation on the same idea. Nearly the same as the figure we had at the start, but this time... That highest octave shape is two frets higher. Otherwise, this is all stuff we've already done. So we move on to another fill. Um, this is quite a viism whenever he's using a clean sound. Um, it will go down and pick really near the bridge, so you get this thinner kind of tone. So what he's doing here is uh, raking the three unwound strings downwards. Starting at the second fret on the G string, letting the other two ring out as open strings. And now you slide up to the fourth, down again, and now start pulling off between the open G string and the second fret. And then speed the trill up at the end. Hopefully landing on that note on beat one of the next bar. So that whole bar would be three and four and. And now to round that phrase off. Now to simplify that, basically we've got this shape here, ninth fret, down two frets, down two more frets, slide back up to the last shape, and then uh, on the A and G strings, this one here at the fifth fret, slide up four. And finally, um, you play that shape again and try and bend both of the notes of semitone sharp. And then down again. I wouldn't worry too much about the accuracy of this. Because at, uh, at the kind of speeds we're playing it at, it's more of an inflection rather than a separate melody. So that whole chunk again. And a very Hendrixy y feel here. So what we're doing here is barring this shape, which is stacked fourth intervals, uh, it's ninth fret on the G string, and then barring the tenth fret on the top two. Slide it up two frets, and down again. Now throw in one of these, it's a first finger bar on the two middle strings, seventh fret. Now back to this shape again, but not bothering with the E string this time, just the G and the B. Slide up one fret and back again really quickly. And round off with that bar, seventh fret, D, G and B strings. And finally, this old favorite, an E power chord. So, uh, 